Just as an explanation, I'm required to wear this at the nursing home, even though I've been fully vaccinated. Uh, the summer for doctors consider it the safest way to sing to a group of people. All the residents are seated six feet apart, wearing masks, and I'm 12 feet from them. And this is the resident's favorite hymn. Thank you, John, for sharing that with us. Hello, there I am. 
son. <laughs> Might have been a little amplified by this, but who knows? Thank you, Morgan. Appreciate that. Good morning, church. Welcome to Benevola United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Suzanne Jones. Welcome to those who are online and who are here with us this morning. Oh, it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, I have a few announcements for us before we begin our service. Uh, we are collecting articles for our September newsletter. So if you have a ministry team, or if you serve on a ministry team, or also if you uh, have something going on that you want the church to know, Send it to Terry Baker at the office and uh, let us know. Uh, send those articles by August 23rd, Monday, August 23rd, and we'll get that in the September newsletter for you. The nominations and lay leadership development team is going to be meeting on August 19th. That's this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Uh, we will meet in the Spiritual Life Center so that we can do the work of the church and maybe make some phone calls at the same time. We'll see what we do. But if you are available, Thursday uh, the 19th at 7 o'clock. Also this week, the Moving On group is going to be meeting at BJ's Restaurant in Hagerstown. And that's going to be at noon. So that's the Moving On group. And last but not least, you may have received an email last night or checked Facebook this morning or even this last night as well. Uh, our re-entry team met on Thursday to kind of adjust and update our policies regarding masks and gatherings and all kinds of things. Uh, I'd, I invite you to check your email about that information uh, in general. Uh, however, um, I did have a message to share with you on, along with that. Now, we are continuing just to sum it up really quick. <laughs> to sum it up, masks are at your comfortability. They are optional. If you want to wear one, please do. If you are unvaccinated, it is encouraged. Uh, they, these are for your decision, okay? Also, uh, with gatherings, gatherings will resume in the space. It'll be up to the leaders and organizers of those gatherings whether, what safe social distancing and masking policies they will institute. As well as uh, Sunday school. Sunday school is anticipated, uh, but it is not, I got a message this morning saying it is not guaranteed depending on the county's conditions mid-September. Um, we are now over 7% positivity rate here in Washington County, and the Washington uh, County Health Department recommends wearing a mask indoors. Um, again, this is a, a time to be flexible and nimble, and we want to be able to gather in person as much as possible. Amen? We also want to do it safe way, too. So do what you feel comfortable. Do what you feel is right and do what you feel is done out of love. That is why we are here together in community, to be in love with one another and to be loving on one another, but at a safe distance, perhaps. And maybe there might be time for embrace. I'm not the one to judge, but we will allow God to lead our hearts. Amen? And that is who we came here to worship this morning. So let us join together in worship uh, as we... Yes, madam. Thank you, Kathy. I meant to mention that myself. I apologize that I missed that. For those online listening, uh, there are post-it notes on the bulletin board in the, in the hallway here. Come and get yourself a post-it note that has some items that are needed by Katie's Cupboard. Uh, grab a post-it note and drop those items in the office at your leisure. We appreciate all of the donations that have been made so far and continue to be made. Uh, but don't forget to pick up your post-it note this afternoon or this morning before you leave, okay? All right. Now let's get ready to worship. Amen. Now let's center our hearts. Let us join together and uh, stand as you are able and join in the call to worship. 
gather around. You are welcomed here. We come yearning for here good news. In a time where there are so many discouraging and negative voices, it is the God of encouragement who will speak to us today. Let us bring our thanks and praise to God. We come boldly to worship God, Lord our God. Amen. Let us worship singing uh, hymn number 102. Now we thank we all our God. We will sing verses 1 and 2. It's time to uh, join together in our sharing of our joys and concerns. Uh, it is a joy to be able to, to be present with one another today. Amen? And uh, certainly the weather that we have had in this coming, this coming week has been quite interesting. Uh, but we thank God for the rain and for the sunshine and for the growth of the grass. Uh, you know, things that are growing around us, the, the aims of summertime and then I've seen a few leaves trickling down, too, so that means fall is on the way. <laughs> uh, what joys and concerns can we bring up this morning? Yes, Kathy. Uh, I will be prayer for Kathy's mother-in-law, Glenda, who is in the midst of dementia. I also ask prayers for Janet Fulton, for her mother, Mildred Price, who is currently at Summerford, and she uh, is on her way to go home with the Lord. Mildred is uh, hanging on, and uh, Janet asks that you be in prayer for her, that she peacefully is received into the Lord's arms. Yes. How's Jack doing? All right. We'll be in prayer for uh, Richard, Richard Hartle, who uh, is owner of Diamond Electric in, in around town. Uh, he has been diagnosed with COVID-19, and uh, he, we are definitely being prayer for him. He does have other uh, health complications. I know he has a heart condition, too. 
So I'll be in prayer for Richard as well as his wife, Kathy. Uh, and continued prayers for Jack Eckerd. Uh, and also uh, we praise that Nancy has been able to come home from the hospital, but continue to pray for Nancy Geyer uh, and her healing as well. Yes, Bill. It is good to hear and see John up here singing to us once again. Yes, that is quite a joy. Thank you for offering your gift of voice and song. Yes. Yes, for all the troops that they have had to send out uh, to, uh, it was down south, uh, to, it was to, to responding to the earthquake. There was one that was, went to Haiti, was it? No, I'm sorry. Oh, good Lord, have mercy. To Afghanistan. <laughs> i got two things going on in my head right now. They went to Afghanistan, and we are, will be in prayer for them as they travel over there and uh, deal with the, na the navigation that is going on in that area. But also for um, the people of Haiti, too. I know we did res uh, send some response to that. The people of Haiti experienced a 7.0 earthquake over the weekend, and we want to be in prayer. 7.2, to be exact. It was quite powerful, and uh, we, we want to be in prayer for them. Kathy, I see your hand up. We will be in prayer for Dottie as she has a light surgery tomorrow. It's always, always good to have prayer to prepare us for surgery. And those who are also recovering from surgeries, too, we give joy and thanks. And I'd also like to continue prayers for the Arnold family, for Tammy and Logan. We had uh, Rusty Arnold's funeral here yesterday and were able to celebrate his life. And we had a, a wonderful turnout, and it was just a joy to be able to be with one another, but also offer comfort and offer a word of hope and encouragement and just to walk alongside with the family. So if you could keep them in your prayers, and if you feel ever so need, reach out and send a card. Maybe there's someone in your life who is grieving right now or maybe experienced a loss and have not been able to have a service to remember life. Uh, perhaps now's the time to send them a little uh, card or give them a call. We all can use encouragement this time. Well, with that, friends, let us take our joys, our concerns, all that is on our hearts, and let us offer it up to God in prayer. God of love, we come to you today as your children, calling to you giving you thanks and praise for the day that you have given us. You are the one who speaks, and there are so many things that are vying for her attention right now. But there is nothing more important than to hear your voice, O oh Lord. Speak in our hearts this day. We have lifted names and situations aloud Names of loved ones, names of friends, those who are in our community and beyond our community. And these are situations that are in need of your healing, in need of your comfort, in need of your guidance. Guide us, Lord, as we move into this season that is yet unknown, as the fears bubble up May your love calm them down. May we feel your embrace and feel your presence as we wade through the depths of uncertainty. Lord, we utter in our hearts those names and situations that we were unable to speak aloud. We bring it all to you. Illuminate us, Lord as we listen for your calling and call to us to a deeper understanding of your ways. Move us, Lord, so that we may shine for you. May we meditate on your word and what it means to truly love one another and to love you, for this is what you have commanded us to do. Now we lift the words that your son 
taught his disciples to pray. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we will now hear our scripture this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> this morning's uh, reading is from Ephesians chapter um, 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. May God give a blessing on this word that we receive today. I love how the, uh, depending on what translation of the Bible that you have, they have the, like the little titles at the top of each chapter, what it might be directed toward. And today it's be very careful. Then how you warning? Are you threatening us, Paul? Or are you holding us accountable? We shall discover this today. Amen? Well, let us pray. Merciful God, we give you thanks for the gift of the word that you have given us. Help us to take it, write it upon our hearts, so that we may share their word with others. This we pray in the name of our risen Lord Jesus. Amen. title this morning is Giving Thanks, and uh, giving thanks sounds something that needs to be done at Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> Very, uh, I'm trying to like fast forward our fall season for us. Well, I hate to tell you this, but stores are already getting prepared for fall. All the fall decorations are out, heck, pumpkin spice, everything is already out. And uh, hey, that's just a matter of, of what it happens, especially in a matter of commerce. They have to think three months in advance of what they need to sell to their customers, and that's why you get pumpkin spice lattes in August. So, uh, or pumpkin spice cereal, pumpkin spice beer, pumpkin spice ramen noodles. Did you know they made pumpkin spice ramen noodles? I heard this on the radio the other day. She was listing what they had. How gross would that be? But in other words, it's very intriguing. I don't know about you, but in college, that was like the, the feast of feasts to have ramen noodles. Uh, anything other than chicken flavor kind of you know, like went by my nose, but pumpkin spice, I don't know about that. Well, today's scripture speaks about the evils in the world, but it also speaks about gratefulness. And that kind of reminds me of the season of Thanksgiving, the season of thankfulness. Today's text from Ephesians talks about evil, that's the truth be told, but most of us admit that this world is steeped in evil. You know, it's the brokenness of the world. If we start fussing over things like identifying anything that's going on in society, we're not likely to look at it with gratitude, right? Most of the time when we have or preference a sentence with, oh, society does this, it's usually in a negative tone and there's no gratefulness behind it. 
But we have to admit and confess that the kingdom that we proclaim is not fully here yet. The one that we pray in the Lord's Prayer, that we ask to come, has not quite come yet. Somebody agreed with me on that. There is a subtle duty. That's God saying, point. We can catch glimpses of the kingdom around us. But that's if we are paying close attention. We can find the good in our world by merely focusing on it. But most times we are focusing on some of the wrongs or some of the things that are unfair. Not many times do we focus on God's reflecting grace and how we live it out. This is how we can give thanks by focusing on those moments. Where we find gratitude each day is when we identify where God's grace is impacting our life. Since we're talking a little bit about fall, I have an example here about Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving in 1929, I'm going to take you way back. 1929, times are tough, they were dark. It was the days of the Great Depression. A group of ministers in Northeast United States, all graduates of Boston Theological uh, Seminary, gathered to discuss how they would conduct their upcoming Thanksgiving service. Now, as you might expect that, you know, things are really bad, and they have to share a word of positivity and gratefulness to a community that was hurting. Things were as bad as it could get. There's no sign of relief ahead. Bread lines were depressing. They were long. And the American economy had plummeted. And the term Great Depression seemed just an apt de uh, description of the mood of the country at the time. At first, the group of ministers considered just avoiding touching the subject of thanksgiving at all due to the human misery that surrounded them. After all, what was there to be thankful for when you saw such hardship? But Dr. William Steger, he had a different idea. Dr. Steger was the pastor of a large congregation in the city, and he challenged the group to change their minds. He said, this was not the time to give passing mention to Thanksgiving, but just the opposite, that this was the perfect time for the nation to get matters in perspective and thank God for the blessings that are always present, but perhaps suppressed or overlooked due to the intense hardship. Friends, the truth is that most of the intense moments of thankfulness rarely occur in good times. They occur when times are hard. Remember the pilgrims on the very first Thanksgiving event that we were told? Fully half of them have died. Barely any of them made them over. The ones that did make it got really sick. But they still gave thanks to God. Their gratitude was not something, but in something. It was the same sense of gratitude that led Abraham Lincoln to form and establish the first Thanksgiving Day in the midst of the Civil War, when the list of casualties just seemed endless, and the nation struggled to hold on. Given what we have been going through in the past 17 months, and maybe perhaps in your own life, there's confusion. There's hardship. Perhaps you are suffering. Maybe you've lost a loved one, a friend. Or maybe you are sick yourself. Maybe you've lost a job or haven't been back to work yet. Maybe the pandemic has left you with little financial health or maybe even health resources to rely on. It might be very well that you're experiencing your own Great Depression and watching others go through a type of depression. 
So if any of this is the case, why in the world would we be thankful today? Why in the world will we be thankful if our world is collapsing in around us? Again, this is a great question, and we're going to likely struggle with it. We're far more frequent than like we want to admit. Why should I be thankful for what I have if I don't have nothing? How thankful can I be when my life situation is really hard to bear? When the list of things go on and on and on and on. Well, our text reminds us today that we need to be careful and the times are evil. Another way of saying it is life can be difficult with challenges arising all around us. And in the difficult times, the only way we're likely to get through them is to keep focused on the things that aren't going wrong. And remember to be grateful to God and to others for helping us to keep moving forward and not moving back. So how can we cultivate this spirit of gratitude, this grateful spirit? I'd like to suggest three things that might help us during times of trouble. And maybe you have heard this before. We need a reminder. First off, it seems to me that in times of extended trouble, like the one we currently find ourselves in, we either learn to be thankful or we end up getting bitter, right? I think you may have heard the phrase before, you either get better or you get bitter. A bitter person is someone who is always unhappy with their life and they're miserable and they're miserable to be with. Unfortunately, we have many of those people in our lives that we'd rather not be around because they're just a little bit too negative. A bitter person often becomes obsessed with the question, why me? Why am I the one always getting cheated out on the best things in life? Sometimes jealousy sparks up inside of them, or perhaps the pride does too. But in difficult times, rather than becoming bitter and angry, we need to guard against them and guard becoming self-absorbed with the why me. For a season, it might be good to do that, yes. However, it's not good to live your entire life that way. You bring yourself down as well as you bring others down. And that does nothing for God. That does not show the glory of God. God will comfort us in our hardship days. Sure, things might get worse, but our faith in God is what pulls us through. Secondly, we must learn to be thankful for, or we're likely going to lose hope. Be thankful when we're discouraged. Sounds like a opposites attract there. But the inescapable truth is that we shall overcome. Jesus promises this in the scriptures. Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. Another time he says, fear not, I am always with you. And in our text today, Paul encourages the Ephesians to be wise and be filled with the spirit of God and always give thanks to God. Too many times we want to focus on the wine and getting drunk part, but no, God is, Paul is saying, be thankful and be grateful to God. Don't turn to the wine. Turn to God. As you reflect on the negative events in your life, ask yourself this question. Where would I be right now if it weren't for God? Where would I be right now if it weren't for my faith? If you struggle to answer that question, perhaps this might be a time to be in prayer and maybe go deeper and understand what the scriptures say to you. God will not abandon you. God has not brought us this far to leave us. The Apostle Paul wrote, always give thanks to God the Father for everything. Honestly, it's not much of a test of faith to give thanks to God when things are going good, right? When things are going good, sure, it's, it's easy to thank God. 
That's not really a, a matter of great test. The greater test of character is when everything turns to darkness. Everything turns to blah. When not everything you touch turns to gold. The truest test comes when we've been knocked down repeatedly over and over and over again, and yet we remain to rise up and give thanks to God. Over and over and over again, the scriptures make it clear that God delights in a grateful heart. And hopefully our prayers in times of hardship and trial might go something like this. We might say, God, you have given me so much that I hate to ask for even more. But today I pray that you grant me one more thing, a grateful heart. Because if you're having problems being grateful or seeing the good in the life, the first thing we should do is ask for help in that area. Lord, help guide me. We must learn to be thankful and grateful so that we can focus on the blessings and not get discouraged. No matter what trouble is going to be lurking around the corner and a telephone call could change your life, a national crisis could happen again. Stocks might dive down. We may lose jobs. We may lose 401ks, all those things of the world. And that goes without saying that the pandemic is going to go on for more years than we can probably count. But just imagine how we can rebuild and how we can slowly rebuild through our gratefulness to God. So the question still lingers. How in the world can we be thankful for even the difficult things that happen in our lives? Now that I am, I'm no expert in this, and, and I'm no expert in being thankful either. I've got lots of work to do it myself, but I assure you that it can be done. Thankfulness is in the midst of suffering if we look for it and see examples of it and be able to embrace it. Today's text isn't just a lesson in manners or just good advice about how to get along, as Paul has been sharing with us. It's a core lesson for the disciples. Gratitude is a condition of the heart and a driver for all sorts of action and ministry and service. Gratitude is the foundation upon which true discipleship is built, and it requires an awareness of our own great need for grace and appreciation. It's a real source of blessing, just like this microphone is a real source of blessing for people who are watching online and, and hearing me right now in this sanctuary. I am grateful for the technology that we have. Is it a pain in the butt? Absolutely. But I am grateful for that pain in the butt. Am I a pain in the butt to my mom? Absolutely. But I know she is grateful for me, as I am grateful for her. Friends, by any measure of those of faith, we are called to live lives of intentionality and to intentionally care for one another and ourselves. And as we make our way through this world, may we find those moments, those moments of imperfect humanity, and experience God's blessing through those moments. What better way to exercise that care than with an honest attitude of gratitude and giving thanks? Amen. Let us give our thanks back to God by offering all that we can graciously back to God through our gifts and tithes and our talents.
God, we offer all that we have as an act of faithfulness. May these gifts reflect your love and bless others, reaching beyond our walls to bring hope, healing, and peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Let us join in singing our final hymn this morning. We will sing out of the faith we sing. It will be uh, page 236 or 2036, Give Thanks. times we're talking about thanks in august thanksgiving in august we should always be grateful and thankful take that with you into this week and may the lord of hosts the lord our christ grant you grace mercy and peace as you go among this world sharing his love and giving thanks in the name of the father son and the holy spirit amen <laughs>